Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Dixon. I'm a postural alignment therapist and massage therapist on Nantucket Island. And I am going to be teaching a class today that is on getting up better and going upstairs better. Now, everyone here might be of all different fitness uh, <clears throat> levels. And the most important thing is to be safe. So our number one priority is to be safe. The second priority is that whatever you're doing is appropriate for you. And if anything you are unsure, feel free to ask questions, but also talk to your doctor or if you feel like you need sort of permission to do any of the activities that we're doing, even though most of them are good for most people, always be sure, safety first, and talk to your doctor if you have any questions. Now, everyone should have gotten the little PDF um, from today's class. It pretty much has all the information and links to everything that I'm going to be talking about. So if you look in your emails, you should have it, but you won't need it for today's class. It will be a little bit more useful to be able to look back and go, oh, what was it that Rachel talked about or exactly how did she do that exercise? All the links are attached, so that makes it a little bit easier. Hi, Barbara. Nice Hi to there. see you. <laughs> All right. So this class was really, it's a little bit different, but it's based on a class that I taught last year because one of the most important things that we can do is to be able to live safely at home, is to be able to get up from the ground. And a lot of people don't realize when they start to lose functional movement. And by functional movement, I'm talking about movement that is able to help us get through life and break down into the little pieces of it while safely. So a lot of times, over time, people don't realize that they've had little deficits and little deficits that keep us from being able to um, live safely at home and live independently safely at home. And we all want to be able to live independently and safely at home. So whatever stage you are in life, even if you are, have a lot of these functional movement deficits or you have a few of these functional movement deficits, something in today's class will be able to be useful for you. Um, and I would say that today I'm breaking down quite a few pieces of being able to get up from the ground, but also the health of your foot and all of our foot classes, which are listed in the library YouTube are also incredibly helpful. So, you know, the, the PDF that I had, or it's not a PDF, it's a Word document that I sent, it, talk, it has a little article that really talks about um, how important it is to be able to get up from the ground. Now, I'm not talking if you fell and you broke your hip, you wouldn't be able to get up from the ground from that. But in general, being able to get up from the ground and having healthy feet that feel the ground are very, very important for independent health. So the class that I did today, it's all a mixture of information that I got from um, Katie Bowman's book, Dynamic Aging, which is excellent for people looking to improve functional movement in a very creative way. It's from my education in Egoscue University and my PTX software. And it's also from Kathy Dooley, who was an educator of mine. Um, she's a chiropractor and an anatomist, and she does a lot of YouTube videos that are really great. And um, I attached a YouTube video that she had done on stairs, which is really excellent. Um, but today's class had originally, uh, people had said that they wanted this class because I had just gone to visit my mother for the first time in a year since the pandemic. And my mother had really declined a lot in a year. And I'm hoping she's not on this because she'd be a little insulted, but she had declined a lot in a year and um, I could visibly see it instantly. So she had, her bone density had also decreased in the year that I'd seen her. And um, when bone density increases, whatever curves you have become more compressed. So I could look at her upper body, which was very rounded. And uh, I, I had a guess that her bone density was a little bit off. And I was correct. She just had her bone density and 
she it was down. She had also had uh, she had also slipped and fallen on the ice a couple weeks prior and sort of bothered her shoulder and she had a lot of shoulder pain which didn't really have to do with the bone density but she had been for a really long time when she was down on the ground not having the leg strength to get up and needing her arms to kind of push herself up which we'll talk about today now that's great in an emergency but because my mother hurt her shoulder suddenly, and she didn't have strength in her legs anymore, she suddenly wasn't able to get up from the ground. And even though she was mostly home with my father, it suddenly, it's just, um, she became aware of how much she was using her arms to get up. So we broke down the movement because the, the whole thing was very hard. We broke it down into pieces. And that's what I'm sharing with you today. Um, my mother's exercise routine had been very specific to her in a couple of areas. Um, most of what I'm doing today is the same for you guys, um, but I've taken out one specific thing that was a little bit different and added on a few more general ones. So if you have any idea uh, or any interest in, in really understanding why it's so important to get up, I did attach a link. Um, there's also some great books that I can share with you, but one of the best books simply for breaking down functional movement for people who are older is Katie Bowman's book on dynamic aging. It's really excellent. Okay, so what do we have to do to have functional movement? And functional, really, functional movement really is um, aligning the body from the bottom up um, and we've talked a lot about this. If this is your first class, most of my classes talk about postural alignment therapy. And with postural alignment therapy, we are really looking to do exercises that are going to align our body properly. And by properly, we ideally want to have all of our major joints pointing forwards, as opposed to maybe my knee pointing in this direction and my shoulders pointing in this direction and one hip being higher or in my head being twisted, okay? When we think about it from the side and, and no one has perfect posture, right? Including me, but we're going to want to find that our joints are all wooded properly. So my ankle is where my center of gravity or my pelvis is then going to be loading through my ankle. And then my shoulders are over my hips. And then my head sort of by my ears is aligned over my shoulders because our joints are really meant to be um, what supports our body. And our joints using full range of motion is really how our joints become healthy. Lots of people need hip replacements and things like that because they've overused a little piece of their joint and not really used their joint properly over a really long time. When we don't have, when we have some movement deficits, one of the best ways to work on it, in addition to aligning the body properly, is to break down the movements in little, small, manageable parts build up the strength and the muscle coordination of those smaller parts and then put it together, okay? For example, if I were to be up here and I'm gonna go down to the ground, okay? There's many ways of doing it, okay? But different ways are we're going to, you know, get all the way to the ground and maybe I'm gonna put my hand down or something like this, right? But there's all sorts of elements. There's elements where I'm coming up on my knees, and then there's a hip flexion moment where I'm coming here, and then we're going to have one leg here, and then I'm going to be doing a little bit of a push-up. So we have all these different pieces. Trying to put them all together requires that we have strength in all the areas, and we have neurological and sort of brain awareness of each of the patterns. And many people benefit by building up the strength in the smaller pieces and then putting it together as a pattern. So what we're really gonna be doing today is breaking it into manageable pieces that work well for you and then show you how you can put it together as a pattern, okay? 
Um, and then we want to put the parts together and move more. Anyone have any questions so far before I start breaking it down? Sorry. Okay. So we're going to start today with creating a stronger, <clears throat> um, properly moving lower body without overusing our upper body, and then ideally learning about going up and down stairs. So <clears throat> most people, when they're getting up from the chair, we'll start with getting up from a chair and then we'll get up from the ground, okay? So most people, if we're in a chair, okay? So most people have underused our lower body and we depend too much on our upper body to be able to help us get up. Now, in an emergency, that's perfect. In general, that's okay, but we don't wanna to have to depend on it because what if you injured your shoulder? And overall, our lower body is much stronger, bigger muscles than our upper body. So we want to be able to use um, our lower body. Let me get my notes out. Okay, so this is what some people do to get up, okay? And it's also not as good for your back to do some of these things. So some people use sort of momentum and we use a heave ho to get up, okay? And then some people take our arms and we're pushing down with our arms to get up. And then some people have, they're holding on to something and they pull themselves to get up, okay? And or we're going to shift our center of gravity. Um, and this is a low chair, okay? It's sometimes easier to start with a slightly higher chair. Now I like this chair because it makes my legs go to a 90 degree, but it's a little bit lower. If you are working on building up these muscles, you might wanna find a slightly higher chair to be able to practice on, okay? But we're gonna wanna shift our center of gravity sort of into our legs and then stand up. And this is a little bit more proper um, getting up. So strategies to get up better from a chair would be decrease momentum, move more slowly, okay? Shift your weight back, pressing into heels instead of your toes. And we're gonna see this when we go upstairs as well, okay? Lean forward with your chest. Now you're upright, but lean forward with our chest to be able to get up as opposed to slumping over like this, which we're a little bit more likely to fall, okay? If our chest is already upright, we're likely to stay upright. <clears throat> and then keep your knees in line with your hips. Don't collapse in. So we could get up where we were sort of, you know, collapsing like this. In the ideal world, we're going to have a nice stable muscles, which are gonna be able to help us get up. Okay, so those are different strategies. Now, a lot of people start to recognize they have trouble getting up or they've been using some of these other strategies, mostly the heave ho, if they have a bad back. And suddenly this heave ho of getting up, when you have a really sore low back, you start to recognize that that isn't working. It really hurts to get up, okay? So another way that we could get up, if you have a bad back, and this is not you could do this all the time also, okay? This doesn't use your legs as much. This is more about talking about our center of gravity where our, our general weight is located, shifting more. So if I had a bad back, okay? And I was getting up from this chair, instead of heaving forwards and having a sore back, I'm going to take my legs. Let me try, let me try going back a little bit so you can see my feet. I'm going to shift my weight. I'm going to shift one leg forward, okay? I'm going to shift into, so now I'm here, and then I'm going to come upright, okay? Again, this is a low chair, but I would get up like this, and most people with the really aggravated back can get up more easily with that than they can. Now, <clears throat> I did attach a video of the whole getting up from the ground. And I gotta tell you, there's, there's different ways that you can rate how well you can get up from the ground. I cannot get up from the ground perfectly at all. Just 
so everyone knows that everyone's at a different place in their world. The perfect get up, okay, is somewhat dependent on not using your arms at all and rarely using any of your joints. So they actually start with, and this is what I cannot do, you start with your legs right here locked and you can literally stand up from this. But I can't do that. In fact, I haven't even been practicing. <laughs> this is something where the more you practice, the better it is. I really got to tell you, even when you are 46 and you are practicing this, the more that you do it, the better that you get at it. <clears throat> because it's partially muscles and it's partially neurological, just awareness of how to do the movements. Okay. But what's really going to help <clears throat> with breaking down the movements are two or three different of the Egoscu exercises that I really like. One is the Egoscu sit to stand, and one is the Egoscu hero squat. Okay, so Egoscu sit to stand. Now, in the perfect world, okay, you are going to have your hands up like this with your elbows back. Okay, what that's going to do is it's going to create a straight upper back. Um, it is going to make a little bit of work between my shoulder blades because I spend, you know, like eight hours a day massaging like this. So my my back wants to go like this. So now I'm creating work in my upper back extension. Okay, and I'm going to stay upright as much as I can. I'm going to shift into my legs and I'm going to stand up. Now, while I'm doing it, okay, my feet and my knees are ideally pointing forward, okay? So this is more the advanced way of being able to do it. However, these are ways of making it a little bit easier, okay? If you have trouble having the strength to be able to do this, okay, first of all, you want to start about midway in the chair. So I'm not all the way back doing this. I'm sort of starting about midway into the chair to be able to do this. The other thing is, is <clears throat> breaking down pieces, it's going to be easier even if you just had your arms out here. If you have trouble getting up, Start, you could even have something where you're not necessarily pulling yourself up, but you have this for stability, okay, if you needed to grab onto it. So I happen to have a little bar right here, and I'm not using it to heave myself up, but I have it just in case I needed it. It's also keeping my shoulders sort of not using it to, to push down on something keeping my shoulders in slightly better alignment. Now, if you have trouble getting down from a chair, even as low as the ones that you have to build up strength, find a higher chair, okay? You're better off building up strength with the proper joint movement than you are um, doing it sort of poorly. Okay, because it's also neurological. Now, this is slightly unstable, but now I'm higher. You can see that my hip angle is a little bit different. Okay, and now when I go up, there's not as big a movement. So I'm going to build up both the neurological uh, muscle, the muscles, and the neurological movement of hip flexion to hip extension. So that is Egoscu sit to stand. Eventually, and this is hard for almost everyone, right? Creating an active shoulder. Most of today's world, we do a lot of stuff like this. So this is a really great activity, just like this. And then we keep our feet about hip width apart, shift our weight in and go upright and come back down is a great exercise. I give this to a lot of people of all ages. So that is Egoski sit to stand. Does anyone have any questions 
On Igaskiu, sit to stand before we go into hero squats. Okay, so hero squats, um, my mother was having trouble getting down to the ground, so I taught her how to do it on a chair to start with, but I'm going to show you how you can do it in two ways. So, now, if you have knees that don't like compression, okay, I'm going to have this pillow, I'm going to show you it starts out a little bit easier, okay? So if you have trouble, so my feet are here, I'm going to be sitting back on it. I can have my arms up here, okay? Or I could just have my arms anywhere, right? Up on a thing. But I'm essentially coming from hip um, flexion to hip and glute extension. So I'm working on this. And they have it that you don't come all the way up, but really it doesn't matter, okay? So we're doing this movement. You're going to feel your quads really work. If you come all the way to the end and give your butt a little bit of a squeeze, in my opinion, that's even better. Now, if it's hard on your knees to come all the way down, okay, or this feels like it's too much muscle work, you can take a pillow. This pillow might be a little bit big, but you can take a pillow. So now I'm not um, compressing as much, and I'm able to come up and down and up and down and up and down. Now, my mother was having trouble getting down to the ground and she didn't have really good mats and things like that to do it on. I am on a very soft mat, which is easier on my knees, okay? So to start with though, I had her come up to a chair. I'm not sure if this chair is gonna look right, but we had right here and I just had her, the chair was a little bit bigger, but I just had her um, do sort of the hero squats with this, okay? Because she still got that hip flexion and extension and she didn't have to get to the ground and hope she could get back up because her arm was sore. Obviously, you don't wanna be on a rocking chair for that one. All right, any questions so far on the hero squat or the sit to stand before we go over a few others? I have a question. What is the standard size of a chair I mean, from the ground? Is there one? I don't know what the standard is, but it doesn't really matter. So in the perfect world of sitting, right? Right. Uh, there isn't really a perfect height. There is a better angle of your different joints for you. So this chair, I said it's a little bit low uh, for me, but I'm actually quite tall. Well, relatively tall, right? <clears throat> Let me show you. So the perfect way to sit though, okay, is where we can relatively sit upright. A lot of people sit here and then they slump down like this, you know, and that's not great for your back, but Let's say that we're gonna sit up here. We're gonna sit upright a little bit, okay? Sometimes people wanna put a little bit of a pillow behind your back and that's actually okay. We want you to have just a little bit of a roll in your back as opposed to a slump back and then allow your upper body to be kind of relaxed. But notice how I have kind of like a right angle at this hip and then I have sort of a right angle at this yeah. and then my feet touch the ground, okay? Like my feet touch the ground okay, as opposed to hanging here. And so this would be a decent chair height for me. My knee is actually almost, almost a little high. Like I could be probably in a slightly higher chair and it would be okay. Now, this chair might work well for someone who is much shorter, but say your leg was hanging here and you weren't touching the ground because it was a little higher, well, this is going to make it too high for me, but maybe put a box right here, okay? So you would put a box right here, so now your feet are stable on the ground. Everything is at right angles, okay? Then we also ideally want to be able to have a chair that's going to allow you to be upright, okay? So 
Most people that sit slumps like this are doing it because they're adopting a little bit of a lazy way of sitting. But ideally, we want to be able to have everything relatively supported so all our joints are at nice right angles. And then if we're working on the computer or whatever, we have our eyes relatively horizontal to our computer screen and our hand. Like if my hand was right here and I was using a mouse, this is a good position for my mouse and my keyboard because now my arms are at right angles and my eyes are staying horizontal to the computer. Um, so that so really it's not about what's the right height for a chair. It's about how to make the chair the right height or find the right chair for you. Gotcha. Okay. Rachel. Um, Rachel. Yes. Um, I, I just tried that to get down on the floor uh -huh. and put my my legs behind me. I cannot sit down on the backs of my legs. Do I need to keep working to do that? Did it hurt or were you just stiff? Um, it was stiff. Okay. So there's a handful of different joints that have to bend in order to get down there. Okay, so if you were here, okay, so right, like when I'm sitting down at this chair, okay, these are only at 90 degrees, these are only at 90 degrees, and my, my ankles are pretty much neutral, okay, so it's, it's a decent, but it's not super, it's, it's not a greater than 90 degree angle. When we come down here, it becomes more. Our knees are not at right angles. Um, our feet have to be able to go straight, okay? And our hips are still, actually they're a little bit less than 90 degrees, okay? My guess is probably it was your knees keeping you from going all the way down, okay? So there's, there's two different things. I wouldn't push it yet. I would start with, it's really good to get down to the ground and get back up every single day if you can do it safely, okay? You might wanna have something like a chair if you had trouble getting up. You ideally want to have something that you could use to get yourself up as an emergency if you had trouble getting up. But if you had trouble getting down, I would start with the pillow behind here and work at the movement because even this movement moving the joint is going to kind of lubricate and get that joint working a little bit better okay okay um the other thing i know i've talked a lot in mobility classes about um like original strength um mobility drills okay and if your hips are really uh sticky and tight and various different things some different rocking like this and really that you can almost stretch, like I'm gonna open my legs a little wider than hip dips, just so, so I'm, I'm sort of rocking back. My upper body is kind of upright. I'm not flexed like this, but I'm gonna rock back a little bit. And then I'm gonna rock a little bit to my side. And then I'm gonna rock like this. And it's not to be painful. It's simply to kind of lubricate and get the joints moving a little bit more. And there's probably um, different levels if you look at original strength. There's other people that work on mobility drills like that, um, including probably uh, Katie Bowman. But I would, one, start with the pillow underneath your legs. And just the movement of getting that strength is probably going to get your hips moving a little bit more. Okay? okay. I'm not talking about pain. I'm just talking as long as it feels comfortable enough. Okay? And then the next thing is, is you might want to look at some mobility exercises for your hips. So the ones that I was going over today is a little bit more strength, but not really lubricating the joint as much. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So there's other pieces to getting up from the ground. Okay. Let me go over those real quick and then we'll go over the other things that I was going to talk about. So there is an element where if you're going to get down to the ground, you're sort of down on one knee or down on both knees. 
And then if uh, you were down on the ground, it might look like this, okay? So really, it doesn't matter how you get up as long as you can get up safely. So really even, okay, if you are not sure how things are, have something nearby that you could use to get back up, okay? To get back up if you needed help, like a chair or this. But eventually, okay, there isn't, there's multiple ways that you could do it. And even though you lose a point for hands and knees, theoretically, really, doesn't really matter. There's a little bit of a heave ho, but like for me, I like to practice, like this hip is always a little tighter for me. I can feel it. It wants to go up a little bit, but I'm going to just practice. It's a little bit of a glute exercise. These are probably a little bit more advanced, um, but I'm working on just the ability to come from like my legs in front of me to my legs being behind me. So now I'm up on my knees, right? This is where that strength of the hero squats coming up, okay? I'm able to be up on my knees, but now I'm able to be upright. And I didn't really talk about, but the next thing is balancing on this one leg or holding on to something, right? <clears throat> Bringing the leg in front of you, sort of being able to balance here. And this is actually, Barbara, where a good exercise can be. If you were to practice then bringing this leg forward, okay, and then just playing with some mobility in this position, like I'm taking my pelvis and I'm not to pain, but I'm just playing with it and stretching a little bit and feeling where it goes, okay? Or this one. All right, so when I do this though, I'm having to balance mostly on one leg, okay? So if you need to have something nearby that you could have, because we want to have safety first, okay? And then theoretically, you could hold on to something to help you up, even if it's just to feel like you're stable, okay? But eventually, we want to be able to come up. Now, in the perfect world, right, we might have our weight shifted in the back leg and a little bit in the front leg, okay? So we're going to come up like this and maybe go like that, okay? So this is a little bit more advanced. And safety first. You can see I'm even touching the wall. Okay. Um, any questions on that? All right. So the other thing that often happens at the same time when people are overusing their upper body and let me just check the time real quick. Okay. Overusing their upper body and under using your lower muscles are because we all do all these activities going forward, right? We get these rounded upper back with shoulders that are a little bit stuck out here, okay? So that doesn't really help. This is where the arm um, elbow curls creates, instead of flexion, we create extension both at the upper back and at the, um, at the shoulder joint, right? But almost everyone is going to benefit from a couple of my favorite static back exercises, which I'm just gonna to talk to you about. So a lot of people have that curvature, things get stuck a little bit in flexion. And then over time, things get a little bit worse because then you, know, you get a little bit of osteoporosis or you get, um, you get some um, disc, height loss, and then that becomes, you become a little bit more stuck that way, okay? And we don't really want you stuck that way. We want you, your bones to be strong and we want you to be upright and a little bit stable and able to move. So some of the best ways to deal with that curvy upper back with those shoulders that are stuck like that, okay, are my static back exercises. So let me just grab these real quick. With the static back, I had this. Okay. So with the static back, I'm going to carefully get down on the ground. 
I'm going to find a chair or an ottoman or something. Now, it is helpful to be on the ground for this because the ground is hard. And we're going to be, this is a partially passive exercise, but we're gonna be using the, the hardness of the ground and you can be on a mat, but a bed is too soft. The relative hardness of the ground to allow gravity to flatten our back a little bit, okay? So now I'm gonna be on a mat, on the ground or on a rug, on the ground, okay? I'm just gonna rest my arms out to the side and relatively, my legs are pointing forwards, they're up resting, okay? <clears throat> What's going to happen passively, all right, is that my back is gonna relax into the ground, my upper back is going to relax into the ground, okay? If one pelvis was a little higher than the other, gravity is going to allow it to um, even out. Same with up here. Now, if I have such a curve in my upper back that suddenly my head is looking like this, where more my chin is going to the ground, okay? And when I go like this, it's still chin is up to the ground, then I'm going to put a little pillow behind my back so that my head stays neutral like this, not tucked like this. Over time, if I do this, my back is gonna relax back and I won't need that pillow anymore. So you can start with this one for a couple of minutes. And then, okay. Then because, remember how I talked about we wanna keep the strength in our pelvis and I want to keep everything aligned. When we're already in this position and we've allowed some rotations, unrotations to happen and our back is relaxed. So this is like sitting upright, but not having to work at it, okay? Really great if anyone has a sore back for almost any reason or we've just been sitting every day. I really love this as my everyday exercise. But now I'm gonna take a pillow and I'm gonna put it between my knees and then I'm just going to squeeze and release, squeeze and release, squeeze and release. And I'm looking for equal pressure left to right, not kind of squeezing more on one side and moving. I'm looking to keep it kind of right in the middle. It's gonna be squeeze and release, squeeze and release. And this is stabilizing much of the pelvis muscles, okay? With most of us, this is going to be what we need. Every once in a while, someone might have more of an issue where we're stronger in here and we're weaker back here, and then we could put a band around our knees and then open our legs out to the band. And this is going to be while we're already passively working on aligning our upper body, we're going to be working on the muscles to create a little bit more pelvic stability. And then, I'm going to show you at a different angle. Well, we're already in this position. Okay, now my feet are touching the back of this chair, but I'm going to do, um, pretend they weren't, and I'm going to do ankle circles in one direction. Then I'm going to do ankle circles in the other direction, and I'll show you what this looks like. And then I'm just going to point and flex. And this is going to work all the muscles in our lower leg. In all my years, I've had one client that did not find this fatiguing, one. And I, I've worked on semi-pro athletes who are really in good shape. Okay, so what those circles look like were circles like this in one direction, circles like this in another direction, and then pointing and flexing. All right. So what those are going to do is it's going to help align our, our body more, okay? So we're not slumped over like this as much, okay? It's going to help our shoulders become better in alignment, so it'll be easier to come create this active work right here. And then we're building up the lower leg strength, and we're creating a little bit more pelvic strength. So before we were working with flexion and extension, which was really like the quads and the glutes and hamstrings. But then we were working a little bit of the adductors. And if we went out in a band like this with our legs, we would have been doing the um, abductors. 
Any questions before we get on to stairs real quick? All right, so the point with stairs, okay, I'm gonna show you on this, but it's not perfect. <clears throat> um, I, I did a video, I attached a video that Kathy Dooley did, and I'm really taking it directly from her. Um, but, did I not? I think I did, just a sec. Okay, so going upstairs. So this was designed if you had knee pain going upstairs, but really it's about creating a functional uh, body position as you go upstairs. So you don't cause knee pain and so you do do it correctly, okay? Because a lot of people either do it incorrectly and then you have knee pain because you're over stimulating the knee, okay? And or you don't really have enough strength to be upright and go up the stairs. And so you do things a little bit incorrectly, okay? So the first thing that you want to do is think about having an upright body, okay? So a lot of people, they might be going over the stairs and they're like, oh, I gotta go over the stairs, okay? So now a lot of my weight is forward, okay? Remember the center of gravity, a lot of this weight is forward and what I might be doing is really bending that knee. Now this knee might be over my toes and this knee might also have a lot of weight and we have a lot of um, bursa in there that get really unhappy, okay? So this is not the perfect example because my foot doesn't really fit entirely on this. But what you want to think about going upstairs, okay? Is think upright with your body, okay? Think about heel strike first. Think about make sure that your knee doesn't go over your toe. Um, and partially tuck your pelvis a little bit, okay? Just a little bit. And that actually helps you keep a little bit more upright versus tilt forward, okay? So if I'm going to do that, I'm going to be right here and I'm going to kind of go up and it looks like this, okay? So now I'm coming up and I'm going upstairs like this. Okay, let me see if I move this real quick, if you can see me better. Oops, sorry guys. I have stairs right there. Okay, so if I was going up my stairs, okay, so I'm gonna keep my body upright. I'm gonna heel, I'm gonna heel plant first. I'm gonna make sure my toe doesn't go over. I'm gonna put my weight into the heel. I'm gonna keep my body upright. Now, ironically, when you come back down, you wanna do it similar as well. I'm almost going to heel straight first. Now I don't exactly heel strike, but a lot of people want to do toes first and then bring the heels down. And we kind of almost want to try to go like this. Those are not, I can always try. Okay. But they're walking down. Any steps. questions? I think I've turned it around. I go upstairs. Any questions on going up and down stairs? Oh, she's talking about going up and down stairs. So you really have to rethink and rewire your brain instead of relying on your toes. Yes. So here's the thing. Our, so when we think about where, our, oh, the other thing that um, Kathy talks a lot about is um, that, okay, so we've often talked about what is responsible, what your joints responsibility is. Our hips and our ankles are meant to be mobile and our big toe is meant to be mobile. The rest of them are meant to be stable. So a lot of times we have sore knees going upstairs or we have sore knees in various different ways because we're using our knees as a joint in a way that it's not meant to be. It's meant to be like in, in alignment with things. Um, and if it has to move too much left to right, it will have a problem. 
Um, <clears throat> so I've done whole classes about that, but yes, sometimes what you have to also do is reassess. If you're having problems with some of these things, reassess how well your hip is moving and how well your ankle is moving, okay? Uh, most people, if they correct those areas that are upstream and downstream, their knee will feel a lot better. Now, knees do also have a lot of those bursa. Those bursa have a lot of nerves in them. They get really pissed off. We also don't wanna piss off our knees, okay? We wanna have everything else working so our knees are just being lubricated and not pissed off um, because otherwise it does hurt. But yes, uh, our feet, rethinking our feet are a big thing. I've done at least three classes for feet. I will probably do more because in my posture alignment work, I find stacking the bodily body is very important, but the biggest, one of the bigger issues that people have is a relatively non-functional foot. In other words, they will have how they place their feet and use their feet like a basement isn't ideal. Their basement's a little bit off. So everything else above it is a little bit off. And then also we have our nerves, our, our peripheral nerves in the bottom of the feet where, how we place and how well we feel those nerves tell us where we are in space. The nerves do, um, as one ages or if you have diabetes or things like that, the nerves become less healthy, but you can improve the nerves in multiple different ways, using different stimulation things and working just the, the, the toe muscles um, to improve it. Now, here's the interesting thing. Toes are meant to be reactionary, like to push off or to move and stuff. They're not meant to be weight bearing. Too often we weight bear in our midfoot or our forefoot instead of through our ankle. And that is one of the issues where people get plantar fasciitis and bunion. Um, well, bunions really come from too much weight in the big toe and using the hip too much. But, you know, essentially we're not loading the ankle, we're loading the part of the foot wrong, improperly. So there's always things that you can do. And sometimes things have gotten really far. You can always improve it, but you might not go, but you can always be in a better position than you are now. Even if you have diabetes, even if you have big bunions, even if you have these other things, you can always improve Rachel. it a bit. Rachel, if you wanted to review your, your videos on the foot, could you somehow let us know which ones they are, if they're on YouTube through the library? Amy, do you want to answer that? Because they are. Sure. If you <clears throat> look at the email that I sent you this morning, there's a link to a playlist that's just mostly just Rachel's classes. And if you scroll, scroll through those, there's one um, here I can tell you. Let me just pull it. There, they have the word foot in it, foot or gate. Yeah. Rachel, are you familiar you. with that website, Gate Happens? I think I've seen it. Yeah, they, they have some pretty good things on feet there. <laughs> I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Some of my biggest foot gurus are um, Emily Splickle, um, Dr. Ray McCallahan, who's the correct toes. Uh, Katie Bowman is my great start with foot stuff, but then I really like like Emily Splickle for more. And uh, Katie Bowman, I just signed up for a walking gait class that she did with someone who works with foam rollers, balls, and things like that. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, so yeah, gait is actually an incredibly complicated process. Like I have been trying to find really great gate education and I don't feel like I've really found it even even Emily Splickle is a little bit better with uh she's better with foot to core like core integration which is very important believe me I love it but you know there are many many processes in the gate and gate itself is a complicated thing because it's it's what we've done for so long it's really hard to change it but one of the top things I've seen with people who have foot issues is that their gait length is too long. And recently, even almost whatever a client goes to a podiatrist for, the podiatrist is now starting to say, they used to just say, oh, you have a bunion, you need, you know, you need this or that. Now they're starting to say, 
take a shorter stride, take a shorter stride, take a shorter stride. Okay. Which is nice to see because it's only been in the last two or three years I've seen, but that we've known for a long time that people had the wrong stride length, um, but they weren't, you know, they would go to a doctor and the doctor would just say, oh yeah, you have a bunion. That's why it hurts. They wouldn't say what you had to do to fix it. And I have a whole class on, uh, on gait length. Okay. Um, but essentially for most people, we want to be able to take a shorter stride. You can still walk really fast, but take an appropriate stride length. Thank you. How do they, how do you determine an appropriate stride length? Okay. I'll show you real quick. This is a Katie Bowman, uh, exercise. Let me just put this down. Okay. So I have a half foam roller. See? but you could have a rolled towel. Now this is a soft one. They have harder ones, um, but you might want to start with a rolled towel. Okay. And then we're going to, I'm going to come right here and I'm going to put my foot on this. Okay. Now my pelvis is my center of gravity, right? So I want to make sure when I'm walking, I want to make sure when I'm walking, right, that my pelvis is not loading over my midfoot or my forefoot. I want to keep my pelvis over my ankle. All right, so I want to keep my pelvis over my ankle when I do this. I'm going to take the half foam roller. I'm going to put my foot here, okay, because this is the part of gait where my foot comes forward, okay? My foot's coming forward. I have to be able to have space in my back line to be able to bring my foot up. This is a, an important part where my foot is loading energy, anticipating that I'm gonna hit the ground and move forward, okay? So we're gonna come right here. I'm gonna keep my pelvis over my ankle, okay? And I'm gonna see how far I can bring this foot forward without bouncing. Now I'm tight and I haven't done this today. Okay, so do you see how I'm kind of bouncing a little bit? That means it's really too far. So ironically, but over time as I stretch and stretch and stretch and bring awareness, if I do this for a couple of minutes, I can probably bring my foot to here accurately. See, I'm still bouncing with my toes, so it's not perfect. But I'm mostly over my ankle. This leg is forward, so ironically, this is what my stride length should be. It's not very much, is it? Some people actually have a negative stride length, which is their foot is here, they're loading right there and they have to have their foot back in order to not bounce. So it's an interesting concept, but that exercise right there is both a test and a, um, and a treatment, okay? The other thing that you can do, so that's the test, but you could also get this half on roller and do some time where you're like this and uh, you probably can't see it right now because of the thing, but I'm just on both legs right here and I can just stretch and I can become aware that I'm going for a walk and I already know that my stride length is now about like this, okay? So then I go, and so I do this before a walk and it's going to allow me to lengthen my walk. Then I'm going for a walk. If I'm gonna start walking this big, okay, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna to tilt my pelvis forward and tilt up at my back, okay? Or I'm just tilting my pelvis forward and I am kind of like walking like this, okay? Tilted forward, which we don't want. So then when I go and I'm going for a walk, I'm going to have already stretched out my back line and I'm going to have a better awareness of what today's um, gait length should be. So it's ankle. 